Welcome to 2017, the year of the long-awaited Nintendo Switch. The hype is everywhere, but this also marks something quite sad, which is the death of the Wii U, a console ahead of its time, which I personally had a lot of fun with. To celebrate its end, I decided in this episode to talk about my favorite Wii U game and my favorite game overall since the GameCube days, which is Pikmin 3. For those who don't know it, Pikmin is a post-apocalyptic franchise that was created by the legendary Shigeru Miyamoto in the early 2000s. To me, its third installment, released in 2013, is the best in the series by far, and let me tell you why. In the year 20XX, inhabitants of Kopai decide to travel to the planet PNF404 to bring home food as they are suffering from a serious famine. Three explorers, Alf, Brittany, and Charlie, are sent to the planet with that mission, but they crash when approaching its atmosphere. This accident caused them to lose the cosmic drive key that is necessary to return to their planet. They therefore have a new purpose on this planet other than bringing back fruit for their people. As the plot thickens, you learn that Captain Olimar, the very captain from the first two Pikmin games, is in possession of the key, which is a nice callback to the GameCube era. Taking control of the three Copites, you start your mission, traveling through five different areas in a search for Olimar, all the while collecting fruit for yourselves and for your planet. The adventure unfolds. The Pikmin games play in a unique way, as it is not the main characters who kill enemies and collect fruit. Instead, you manage a large number of Pikmin, a strange race which will do anything for you. This is really what makes this franchise so interesting, as you must take breaks from advancing to farm for Pikmin since they are your only key to survival. Every battle is very stressful, as the more Pikmin die, the closer you are to losing, since they are not only your health, but your power, and only big numbers of Pikmin can kill the most powerful bosses of the game. Pikmin are different in many ways, however, which can lead you to use some for certain tasks, like building a bridge, and others to break down a glass wall. Red Pikmin are the strongest and are resistant to fire. Yellow Pikmin can jump the highest and conduct electricity. Rock Pikmin can break ice and glass along with hitting the hardest when you throw them, and so on and so forth. This diversity adds so much complexity to the gameplay and makes this game more interesting for advanced gamers who will try and maximize the work done in a certain amount of time by using every type of Pikmin. The game is separated in multiple days where you have to plan out exactly where you're going to be going and what you're going to be doing. You'll have to dedicate some days to farming for fruit and Pikmin if you're expecting to last long and some other days to fighting mini-bosses and bosses. The days are how the game saves, so you can restart at any point if you've had too many failures or if you think you could be more efficient. This system is great since it gives you backup files if a recording file corrupts, but that's more of my problem than yours. Pikmin 3 is one of the most magnificent games I've ever played. The planet PNF404 is such a beautiful representation of a post-apocalyptic Earth that makes you smile as you collect phones and other objects once used by humanity. The bright colors of this masterpiece are so pleasing to the eye, and you can really appreciate the high definition of the graphics, which is something even today's 4K games can't accomplish. What's more is the high quality music which is so catchy yet relaxing. This creates a great universe that the player is immersed in right from the starting screen. One of the keys to this immersion is the perfect use of the Wii U gamepad. The gamepad is used as a sort of computer, which every character in the game seems to have. They send calls through it, install different software on it, and store their maps and other data onto it as well. Since the player has one too, he can access all the software that is installed onto it, and can even receive calls from characters, as if he was Alf or another explorer. This makes the player really feel like he's part of the story, and works in favor of the Wii U gamepad, which unfortunately wasn't used well in any other game of the system. To add to the unbelievably awesome story mode, Pikmin 3 also has a highly competitive multiplayer mode called Bingo Battle that I must confess having played for over 40 hours. Both players start with a bingo card which they have to complete by collecting different fruits and enemy corpses, all the while using items to interfere with the other player's progress. It is a fast-paced game that requires full understanding of the management of your Pikmin, and it's amazing. It's such a complete multiplayer experience that I would honestly even recommend it if it was sold separately as its own game. I don't know if it's clear how much I love this game yet. For its breathtaking graphics, its unique take on a post-apocalyptic world, and its challenging gameplay that would make even hardcore gamers struggle. 
I have no difficulty saying this is the best Wii U game since its launch, and I highly recommend it to all. Thanks for sticking till the end of this perfect quest video, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did I'd love if you could leave a like and tell me your opinion about it in the comments below. The Switch hype is on, and if you want to hear my reactions to the presentation on Thursday night, I'd recommend following me on Twitter at perfect underscore quest, I'll be tweeting during the whole show. Anyways, have a nice January, and I'm done, bye!